everybody welcome to a youtube video uh this one is specifically a little different than what we're used to uh, because i'm not playing pioneer today i'm playing pioneer's little brother we're playing explorer explorer is the equivalent of pioneer on magic arena um but they don't have all of the sets on there so there's a couple of missing pieces some of the decks that work in pioneer don't work in explorer um there are no cards in explorer that are not legal in pioneer so it's kind of like a square is a rectangle but a rectangle is not a square you know um and so uh today we're going to be building a bunch of decks uh this is just going to be the first deck that we build today and this is a gruel monsters deck featuring the new card luca bound to ruin so luca bound to ruin five mana gruel planeswalker starts with five loyalty it has completed so you can pay the ability with um or you pay the mana cost with uh two life and two loyalty so if you play it for four mana it comes in with only three loyalty so it can tick up make some mana to play a two drop uh or it can minus to uh make a beast but if you play it for five mana fully powered you get to minus four and then spray your opponent's board with some damage equal to the largest creature you control it hits planeswalkers it hits creatures it's and it but the the important part is that it doesn't die so when you play it for five mana and minus to blow up your opponent's board it sticks around and then the next turn it can make a uh, three three or you can generate two mana to like maybe buy and play obosh the prey piercer or cast uh two creatures in the same turn um i think that this planeswalker ha has been very underrated during preview season i'm very excited to see what it can do and this deck is basically built around Luca. Um, there's another new card that we're playing, and it's one that I think is also going to be extremely powerful with uh, Elvish Mystic and Land Worlds, and that's Sword of Forge and Frontier. For three mana, you get uh, an equipment. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has pro red and pro green. Whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you exile your top two cards. Uh, you may play those cards this turn, and you may play additional land this turn. So uh it equips for two mana this is very similar to all the swords for each color combination this is just the red green one um i think it's extremely good this is the best one that we've had in standard in quite some time and uh it's one that i think is going to be good in both pioneer and explorer and so i'm excited to see if sword of forge and frontier uh can break through in these elf decks uh we're also using love truck beast which creates multiple bodies heart's desire plus the love truck beast itself both of which can carry the sword the rest of the deck is pretty standard fare for things that we've seen out of Gruul. The only exception is that we're playing Obosh the Prey Piercer as a companion. We've seen Gigantha as a companion pretty often. People play uh, less pips on their cards like the Akron War and uh, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. We are going for uh, something a little bit different with Obosh and we're only playing odds. But the thing about Obosh is that you can kind of cheat the deck building parameters by playing um you know the adventure creatures and now uh luca bound to ruin as a completed planeswalker this thing's going to cost four a lot of times and start generating some three three beasts with toxic and i think that you're going to see that those play patterns are actually going to be pretty good and and decent against like opponents when the board is relatively empty but it's a five mana card that um can play as a four mana card and it still allows us to play obosh which i think is a huge deal when you're playing elvish mystic and land War elves a lot of times your elves die a lot of times you have multiple elves being able to accelerate into Luka and casting it on either four or five means that we actually get to use all of our mana essentially every turn. And cards with variable casting costs like Bone Crusher, Love Shark Beast, and Luka give us that flexibility that I think is much needed in, a, in an archetype like this. Um, outside of the creatures, we have uh, some Strangles to be a little bit interactive. This is just a, a one mana removal spell that uh, works along with Obosh and kills uh, a lot of creatures in the format so that we can clear the way. Uh, we have four copies of Glorybringer instead of Sky Sovereign. This is an oldie but a goodie. Now that we have just tons of Gruul Dual Lands, Copper Line Gorge, Carplusion Forest, you know, Crack Crown Pathway, Stomping Ground, we have 16 pure Dual Lands that, that we can play up to, right? They all play Elf and all can let you play a red card on turn two. I think that means the Glorybringer is good again. And I don't know that it was ever bad. Sky Sovereign kind of sat in this place where it was pretty good against uh, Rakdos Midrange for a long time. I think Glorybring is also good against them. Uh, now that they're playing Power Word Kill as their primary removal spell, I think Glorybringer could just be excellent. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to try it. Uh, I really think that the Exert is awesome. Killing a Planeswalker when you Exert and killing a creature at the same time because of the haste, I think is a, a very powerful ability. And uh, I'm excited to see how good it is along with Elves and Luka so we can ramp out into it even when our opponent is 
interacting with our creatures and killing them and stuff. Um, we are not as aggressive as some gruel decks in the past, and many of our cards already have haste. So instead of playing the uh, Reckless Stormseeker, we're playing Fable the Mirror Breaker. This is going to smooth out our draw a bit. It's going to give us multiple bodies for Sword of Forge and Frontier, and it's going to allow us to discard extra elves and extra lands and hopefully turn those into gasoline. Uh, the sideboard uh, has an emphasis on some more pioneer-leaning decks. We have two copies of Alpine Moon. This is mostly for Lotus Field, but it can also be used against Nyctos Shrine of Nyx. Uh, I don't know that it's necessary in this format. If you'd like to cut them, I think that would be okay. We're playing four copies of Rending Volley. This is going to be excellent against Grease Fang, which is a nuisance. A nuisance. Uh, it's also going to be good against um, White Weenie, Spirits of all varieties, anything that plays Collective Company is likely going to be playing white or blue as a primary creature color. And Rending Volley comes in against most of those opponents. Rampaging Frostodon is in the sideboard for the Angel deck. The Angel deck's been tearing up um, Pioneer lately, and I think that it's good in Explore as well. So having some a number of Rampaging Frostodon is great. Last but not least, we have three copies of Embercleave in the sideboard. Ember Cleave is a card that you want to bring in against opponents who are ignoring you. Monogreen Devotion is one of those opponents. Uh, we have to kill them in a creative way because they are able to easily gum up the board with things like Cavalier of Thorns. And so Ember Cleave can come down at instant speed in a spot where your opponent might not be expecting it. And because they're not interacting with your creatures, you should be able to cast it ahead of schedule pretty easily. Uh, so I think Ember Cleave is going to be one of those cards that's going to shine in sideboard matchups. But just remember that when you board in Ember Cleave, Obosh no longer works. So if your opponent is killing your creatures, that's not really a matchup where you want Ember Cleave because Obosh is great when you're playing an Attrition War. And Ember Cleave is usually only good when your opponent doesn't have a bunch of spot removal or sweepers and is just kind of ignoring you. Anyway, this is Gruul Luka. Thanks for watching the deck tech. All right, we're here with our Obosh Luka deck. Uh, we're going to keep this opener because we have a pretty nice curve. And if our opponent doesn't play targets for things, we will uh, just buy Obosh on two, I suppose. I will do this on green since we got plenty of red. And I'll do Heart's Desire. All right, so we're probably not going to have too many targets for Stomp, so we'll probably go face. Ah, we'll just do another one of these. Ooh, scary. Mox Amber. Emery. All right, well, that's a good Stomp target. Let's see if they... So they hit Spring Leaf Drum, so I do have incentive to kill it now. Your turn. Prophetic Prism, okay. Come on, Raph. Play something. I want to glory or bang ya. Or strangle something. Got a lot of pressure coming in next turn. Arn the Great Creator. So now this taps for nothing because it's not a color. Let's see what they go get with the Karn. Mightstone, okay. All right, we'll go Strangle on Karn. Play another Love Struck. Attack face for a bunch. The swords don't look that good here because we didn't draw elves. The swords are going to be great when we draw elves. Alright, uh, no sideboarding because Raph doesn't have a sideboard, but that's okay. What's up, Draw Bear? I, I always liked Arena, man. There's a, there's a lot of things about Arena I don't love, but Arena is a good program. It's a little laggy. Like, there's some things that are wrong with it sometimes or whatever. 
the economy is is kind of awkward on occasion but i i mostly play magic online because there's pioneer right all right we'll keep this we'll, we'll hope we get there right Now, Explorer is very similar to Pioneer, but it's it's not quite Pioneer, right? No blocks. What's up, John Parker? How you doing, buddy? Ringleaf Drum. Emery. Uh oh. All right, so I guess we'll just Elf and try to Glorbringer next turn. Why is oh wow weird? That's fine. Doesn't really matter. All right, no tax. Here go. So next time we'll go Mountain Glorebringer. If uh exert on Emery, hopefully. If they attack with Emery, I'll probably trade. All right. Artifact spells cost one less. That's pretty crazy. Exert. Graveyard has no more artifacts in it. So I guess we'll kill the Foundry and attack for an extra one. Oh, I guess they can bring it back with Emery. That's okay. We'll keep them in the loop. Keep them in the loop. Somewhere seems crazy to me in modern with Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I mean, I think the card's just great, Thunderwunk. I think it's just a great card. I think you can find a million ways to play it. A million billion ways. Untapping stuff, haste is great. Bringing things back from the graveyard is great. All awesome. Sack, self mill, elf combo. A million different decks can go in. Is Tyvar good with Glorybringer? Probably not. But you do get untap it, so maybe. I just think you want to do like more graveyard or, or sack shenanigans with it. Get you somebody who can do both. Are we getting counterspelled? Are we going to kill the Myria? The Myria, again, can get something back from the graveyard, but it's just, you know, a medium-sized creature. So now we got Bouncing Glorybringers. We have Stomp plus Strangle next turn to clean up most of the threats. Uh, GG. All right, we'll be on the plate. Opener is keepable. The second layer is super awkward. We haven't tried it in Vanifar yet. We tried it with a uh, uh, priest sack. All right, so let's go. Oh, jeez. Hmm. All right, let's go draw. We're gonna play Fable. That way we can start ramping up to Glorybringer. Next turn we can actually go land taps, uh, Bone Man plus Strangle. I think I might discard Lair looking for untapped lands. Circle of Dreams, that one's gonna be easy to pick off. Uh, we'll discard these two. All right, so we go Elf. Strangle here, auto pay, copper line taps, attack. And that way you can guarantee the gore bringer next turn. I don't really want to uh, uh, play Bone Crusher and have to sack the treasure because I need the mana source probably. I guess we could have just like strangle, tap land, sack the treasure, play Bone Crusher. I don't know. Right, what are they going to bring back? Leaf Crown?
All right, so ja we want to, uh, I guess, punk their mana a bit. We're going to take a damage here. I'll, I'll tap the elf. And then we'll go attack for you for sure. Let's see. I don't know why this is glowing. All right, so exert there. This is going to go here. And we'll kill the Just Bear Sentinel. And just constrict their mana as much as we can. Is Sign of Blood good in the mono black list you made? I don't think you want to play Sign of Blood and um Frax and Arena. I don't think you can afford to. We're going to attack with everybody. Oh, we're going to copy the Glorbringer too. Hmm? Well, we'll try it later in the week. Draw Bear in uh, uh, Pioneer. All right, we'll keep this one. I'm going to keep the Luka because it's good. I don't think it's that good in the matchup, but it's okay. I'm going to put back a Gorebringer just because I want to keep the Luka. Elf you? No, Elf you. Stomp. I'm a foot guy now. Damn. All right, so we'll go strangle on the War Master. We're probably going to get overwhelmed this game, even though we're killing everything. We're just like uh, on the draw. They had a pretty explosive couple turns. Now they can start casting Coco because they hit their land drops naturally. We could have maybe killed Mystic instead. This is okay. All right, we can't quite Luka with the minus unless we draw a land next turn on, on the fifth turn. Uh, we'll just take this one. And I'll play... Mm, I'm going to play Lovestruck. It's a good blocker here. This pumping their elves means that my life total is under some pressure. They don't have a huge mana battery yet. We're just going to look for a big Luka turn if we draw the land. Luka turn is going to be sick if we draw the land. We can swipe, wipe their whole board, basically. I guess not even not their whole board. They have a lot of, a lot of stuff now. Ah, oh, we didn't draw it. All right, we'll play the elf that we drew. And now next turn, we can guarantee the Luka. Let's just hope we don't die. Tyvar plus like a big mana battery could be very scary. Tyvar plus uh, Circle Dreams Druid is very, very scary. And then our Luka is just going to be too slow because we were one turn too late. Seven? Oh, that's a Nyctos. I thought this was a Basaju. Why is this black and green? Don't understand. All right, you win. Cool, cool. Tyvar's looked great. Very excited about Tyvar. Got to ask, how's having the fast land felt? Um, I don't know that you can play them alongside the lair of the Hydra, um, but I do think it's good. I probably am going to go to four copper line and cut lair. All right, we will... I'm going to keep and just hope I draw red. Ah, that makes sense, I guess. It just looked weird. It's just not how it looks in any other thing I've ever played Magic before, so it just looked funny. Red source? Hmm. All right, we'll just play 5-5. Five, five. Hopefully we draw two lands in a row. One land that taps for red lets me Luka next turn and make a 3-3. Three, three.
uh what the what cool story bro where do i a little bit a little bit Do I end? okay? So next turn we can play Glorbringer. We draw any land we can play Glorbringer Strangle. Uh, not that land. Actually, let's just go green red. Uh, exert, attack, attack. We'll hit this. All right, let's see what you can do, buddy. Might as well for a 3-3 three, is pretty great. Yeah, that was nice. All right, 2-0 so far with Gruul Luka. Deck's looking pretty good, chats. Pretty good. We got one more match on the docket with Gruul Luka, and then we'll be moving on to another deck. What's up, Timido? How's my honey horsey doing? Oh, uh, we'll definitely want the swords after Cyborg Equi, but we're just playing best, so, or we're playing uh, game ones. Are the fast lines feeling good? Uh, so far, I mean, they're just great in general. Um, I think you'll find that, like, sometimes they're going to enter tapped in weird spots, and we're just not used to that happening too often in Pioneer. So it'll be interesting to see, like, how much they add to the decks without uh, taking away their overall strength. All right, we're going to mulligan this one. It's pretty weak. This one's a bit better. We'll keep. I'm going to put back Lair, probably. All right, we'll go Copper Line, Heart's Desire. Next time we go Strangle, Tap Land, and then either 5-5 five, five or Sword on 3, depending on the matchup. You like to see Sword in action? Me too. Hopefully we see it this game. Luka looked good, though. If we had drawn a land in, a weird, in the right spot, the Luka would have been awesome. Scrub deflector, so we kind of have to kill that thing. Tapped land. That's great news for me. Rod Priest is pretty scary. Uh, I'm going to play the Love Shark Beast first just to have a blocker for this thing so that you can't get a free poison on me. We will be blocking. And I'll lose my Love Shark to a couple of combo spells or whatever. That's fine. El I think Sword's just really good with Elves. I think it's pretty bad without Elves. Maybe we need more Mana Accelerators on turn two. Like maybe Lotus Cobra or something, but we, we can't play it with Obosh, so we got to look at doing it in a different light. They didn't play anything, so I'm just going to assume that we're okay. They're going to EOT, probably play a bunch of like Defiant Strikes and stuff, and we just kind of hope we don't get combo killed. March of Burgeoning Life. Don't even know what that does. Makes a copy. Uh-oh. I think we're dead, chat. <laughs> Trying to read your card, sir. Are we dead? I think so. This is a cool little combo deck. Finner and Rock Priest press show confidence is pretty scary. Oh, we're not dead? Interesting. Did not find a land, unfortunate. All right, we'll maybe be able to kill them next turn if we get a little lucky.
Yeah, it's just you need a, an elf to play it early, right? If we're having to spend two turns to equip, we don't actually get much value unless we hit a land off of it immediately. Well, we're at seven poison. I'm going to basically block block to not get uh, toxic to did out. All right, let's uh, attack and see if we can hit two lands. Why didn't... What? It didn't let me attack. Whatever, I'm just going to concede. It's annoying. I just clicked through attacks. That's my bad. You don't have one one. Oh, that makes sense. Duh. Left Truck Beast has a downside. Imagine a card having a downside in 2023. Am I right? Be on the play. Hand is one lander. Got them all. It looked good, though. All right, this is a pretty good one. Put back one love, love truck beast. And we'll see if sword's any good here. If they play one man, or rot priest on one, we'll maybe kill it and then do the heart's desire. If they play Skrelv, I'll just let it sit because killing it now versus later is like the same thing. Let's get sword online. Now, if they want to block and activate, that's fine. All right, so we'll play the... We have played a land, so we'll play Copper Line, and then I'll strangle the Skrelv. And then I'm probably going to die to Illuminated Virtuoso in the next couple turns. Charge through, okay. Okay. We're going to take a big chunk of damage here. Eight, ouchers. Limited Virtuoso is some kind of card, huh? All right, so let's attack. On the Luca. So let's go this on green, this, create a 1 1, create a 1 1. Hopefully they don't give it trample. They played a couple of trample things last turn. We don't get to play the Luca, but I think that's okay. All right, so now it looks like Rap's going to be digging for Trample. We're, we're dead to Trample. We're dead to double protection as well. Homestead Courage. Okay. Wow. This Rap Pre-Sack seems pretty sweet. Uh, so it has Vigilance Double Strike. Okay, we'll jump. If they give it Trample, we're dead. Doesn't really matter. With well, Swords on your Elf. A uh, Forge of Frontier, the new green-red sword. It's not that great against these white creatures, but... I will attack and exert. We're gonna kill the baby virtuoso. 
Get two cards, another sword. Can't play it, we'll just play a lance. We got two blockers for the Virtuoso, as long as they don't give it Trample or Double Protection. We'll maybe be okay. The Glorybringer, maybe I shouldn't have exerted because it allows them to uh, have an extra turn if I don't have a, a creature here. Interesting. Although if they do attack with the Illuminator, they could be vulnerable to just Lair the Hydra attacking and Love Shrug Beast attacking. I hope his hand is just like all Rot Priests or whatever, you know? He already played a couple things that give Trample the charge through specifically. All right, so he's playing a show of confidence. At, at, that must be his only dig spell with the with the connive. All right, he's giving it one more. Looking for a trample. All right, one more turn. Oh, that was a good draw, actually. All right, so we'll make a 1-1. One, one. All right, no trample. If they give it Progreen and Trample, I'm in trouble. I'll probably just, like, block with three Love Shark Beasts or something. All right, well, now it's a 20 power. They found the charge through. Let's hope they don't have God's Willing or similar. Yeah, GG. All right, Raf takes it down. Tough matchup, I think.